Hey, welcome. Thanks for tuning in again to another Sound Painting Saturdays. I'm your host, Evan Mazunik. Just got a haircut. Feel pretty good about it. And I'm coming to you late here on Saturday. Wanted to touch base again with you and share with you a conversation I've been having with several other sound painters uh, around the world. And that conversation resolves around one of the biggest of frustrations people have in communicating sound painting's value to other people who haven't experienced sound painting. And then I want to share with you one way I talk about sound painting to someone who doesn't know anything about the language. And in a sense, one way I sell them on the language and on an opportunity to share with them the uh, transformation it can provide and the fun it can provide uh, the people they're working with. So one thing that really comes up uh, in a lot of conversations is this frustration of, wow, I know sound painting can be valuable. I've seen what it's done. I have fallen in love with the language. And yet I'm trying to explain this to someone else and communicate its value. I feel like a salesman here. I feel like uh, I'm going door to door and no one wants to give me the time of day. Do you re relate with that? I've talked to several people who have had that uh, exact same frustration, whether it's with people in the professional world or with the educational world, really communicating sound painting's value. Um, it's a medium that often is best experienced live a sound painting due to both its visual aspect and also a lot of times its sonic aspect and sometimes it's tough to share a work sample of just a video or just an audio and really share that impact and that fun and the excitement of the moment of creation of composing in the moment. So that's a big frustration I hear and I wanted to gather your thoughts on that and hear how you talk about sound painting to people who've never worked with it before and I want to share with you one thing that I often uh, share with other people in a first conversation about sound painting. They'll ask me about it and say, what is it? And I say, well, it's a sign language for composing live, for composing in real time. It's multidisciplinary. multidisciplinary. Say that five times fast. Uh, you can work with actors and dancers and visual artists as well as with musicians. And it's really uh, for everybody. And they tell me, well, tell me more about this. What is it like? And what I'll usually point to, the first thing I'll point to is the fact that I found it's a great way for people who have never experienced improvisation to begin improvisation, even if they have no background in improv. It's a great way for them to start and to get their feet wet with this language. And they don't have to be coming at it from a place of mastery or expertise or knowing jazz or knowing some other tradition or background uh, that could be a barrier or obstacle to them starting improvisation. So that's one way I usually talk about communicating one thing sound painting can do uh, in a professional and in an educational environment. So I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you have to say. How do you talk about sound painting with other people who haven't yet uh, experienced the magic of this language and how do you communicate that to them and how do you get them inspired and excited and in, in, enrolled and on board with sharing sound painting and having them give you a chance to teach a class or a workshop or stand in from, front of their ensemble or performance group. So go ahead and leave your comment, your video below. Uh, I would love to hear from you and really gather and glean uh, different ways and strategies people are talking about sound painting. All right, so go ahead and leave your comment below, and I will see you next week. Take care.